So here we are, welcome back again now for this next part where finally all the stuff that we ordered in last week's video, we now have here. So this is the first part of it, which of course I'm gonna start assembling and putting it together, which is the rack for the weights. As you can see behind me over there are a bunch of all those weights. And over to the side here in a second, what you're gonna see is the barbell and everything as well. So first things first, just gonna arrange all of this, connect this all up, and then get on with showing you how everything kind of works, even though I need to probably learn myself. So, time to build. Quite a clear up, but uh, yeah, pretty much all done. As you can see here, this is all kind of being uh, set up now. Got all the weights from two kg all the way up to 20 kilos. Probably need a little bit more, but that's fine, we'll get it when required. On this side over here, as you can see, has actually got now the barbell, the weights itself, everything. So, looking pretty good, pretty nice setup here as well. It's just starting off with some light weights here as well, bar about 20 kilos, got some tens on here, some fives, and some more to order to come. But, liking the look of the gym, what do you guys think? Do you like it? Let's uh, change the lights up, give it a little bit of a mood, and then we'll have a look at it in a proper light. But, I'm liking it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Oh. All right, a little bit of a mess at the moment. So here we are. We're in one of the properties at the moment. Uh, entrance needs a little bit of a clean. And we're heading up to what is the first floor apartment. Now, I'll stop by there really quickly because I own all of the flats in this building, <clears throat> barring one. Um, and at the same time, this is now a tenant who has moved out. So my box of keys, yes, uh, this is in Reading at the moment right now. I always have a bunch of properties here, so I need to make sure that I've got the right keys. But this is going to be a trial and error. Yeah, it's not that one. Okay, you got, to me, have you got waiting music? Okay, so going into the apartment, which actually tenants have just moved out of. So let's go in here, come through the door, and let me show you. I must take these keys in a second. We are in what is a very echoey apartment. So let me just open up the window here for a second. And it is um, a two bedroom apartment. Now, this is a tenant who has been living here for around about two and a half years. There were two guys and they have now moved out, gone, gone to another place and there's a new tenant actually moving in. So this place is now, I have to walk around and kind of do an inspection of it, make sure that everything's okay. This isn't something that I normally do. I just, for the sake of showing to everybody, you know, what it is that you kind of do with these inspections. Otherwise it's just take care of by the staff or agents who take care of this for me. So the number one thing when you're looking around a property is seeing the difference from when it is that they moved in. The first instance, when they moved in two and a half years ago, everything was brand new in this place. So I need to walk around and do the checks to make sure that everything is okay. And if there is any work that needs to be done, that has to be taken on really quickly before the new tenants move in. The number one issue for me is, and that I'm concerned about, is void periods on any of the properties that I own. Now a void period is a gap, basically, between when the tenant moves out and a new tenant moves in. Because for me, it doesn't make a difference, but for people who have mortgages, for example, you've still got to pay your mortgage and you've still got to pay bills and everything for that property, if even if there's nobody in there. So let's look around and just check everything. We've seen a little bit of patchwork taken care of here, which is, I think, slightly drying. So that's pretty good. Um, this has actually got to have new uh, tiling and a splashback put here as well for the cooking so things don't just spit. Um, everything looks really good, actually. Very, very clean in terms of where it was. This is, like I said, two and a half years, so I'd expect it to be a little bit more of a mess. Um, in here, we've got the boiler. So I've already double checked this to make sure everything was working, had that done. When you do have new uh, tenants coming in, you have to make sure that you've got the um, certificates, etc., for all of the electricity, the gas, to make sure it's all safe. So those are all up to date here. I think this one doesn't need to be done uh, until next inspection is 23. So that one's completely fine as well. Um, everything's good on that side and everything works well. Uh, sinks, making sure all the taps and stuff are working, which hopefully are. Yes, that is the case. I can see it needs a little bit more of not just the grouting, but kind of silicon sealant that runs around there. But no leaks, everything in good condition. Have these been damaged? Because at the beginning of a, a, a tenancy, what you normally do is you take a deposit. Now, I know there's people that understand how this works, but just for simple terms, one thing I will check actually is just switch that on to make sure everything is good. So let's go in and Let's put those all on. Let's double check that everything is actually working. Yeah, good, all right, fine. So there's the lighting there and that should be hallway. 
Um, so when tenants usually move in, what would happen is, is that they would leave a deposit. Now, what's changed actually since these tenants were in is that you don't take as much deposit as you used to. And there used to be this whole thing between landlords and tenants where when you move out of a place, the landlords just basically used to keep the majority of the money and put that towards that. I really hate that. I think the tenants who work hard, who take care of your property, don't try and squeeze them for little things that might be marks on the wall or whatever. Just get it sorted. It's not a big deal. If they've been paying their rent, they've been doing a good job. And these tenants, even through the pandemic, were paying their rent. So more than happy to, of course, return their deposit to them, given the fact that the inspection here all goes well. We've got a little bit of damage that I can see here to the floor. So these are the kind of things I'm looking out for as well. So down here on the floor, there is a little bit of damage. Again, this is not that big a deal. Um, I've got always, whenever I do any property uh, development, and all the places that I own, by the way, are places that I have developed, I always keep extra and a lot of stuff is similar. So for example, flooring like this, I have in storage a lot of extra bits for this. So if that needs to be replaced, we can do that. That's not a big deal. Um, yeah, let's do a little bit more of a walkthrough. I know that gas and everything is working, extractor fan, checking all of that. Let's check the bathroom out. So bathroom looks pretty decent as well. A little bit of not using the extractor fan I can see here, which creates that little bit of mold. See, that should have been on the whole time. So a little bit of cleaning in here that needs to be done. Same things with the sink, but otherwise everything works. There you go, everything works, toilet works, that's what's important. Uh, towel rail here as well, which is very good. Um, they've left it in a fantastic place. To be honest with you, this is quite close to ready to just move in, just needs a little bit of a clean. Let's back out now as well and go down the corridor. So we've got the entrance phone here, which again, I've double checked, and the thermostat for the heating to make sure everything's working. Let's close that door so we can get through. There we go. Uh, let's go into the bedrooms. So the first bedroom here, which they've done not a bad job of cleaning. I would say the carpets, they could have done a little bit more, um, but it's not too bad. Uh, blinds are here. That's all working pretty well. Yep. Good stuff. Um, I think basically windows are good. Everything there. Thank you for the lighting. Um, I can notice here. So this is interesting, right? When you walk in here, you can see a little bit of a crack. Now I know for myself here in terms of, and you can knock on the walls here to understand these partitions. These are not major load bearing walls. And for anybody who wants to check, listen to the sound difference if possible. Solid, whereas hollow. So that obviously means stud partition walls. That's just wood timber frames, insulation in the middle, and then plasterboard on the front, whereas this is a solid brick wall. So it just means that there's been a little bit of movement here. This can easily be filled and done. There's nothing majorly structurally wrong with this. I think this is where somebody might use for just kind of hanging clothes. So let's back out of this room. This is one of the bedrooms. It's small, but it's a bedroom. We are in or just outside of London. This is the way things work. Let's go through into the back room, which is a lot bigger. This was actually an extension on the building. So this extension meant that uh, I created this extra room, uh, which again adds value to the property as well. And it looks pretty good. We've got really good seating heights in this property and I can't see anything wrong with this room at all. Make sure everything like the windows and stuff work. Yeah, good. That's just on a latch. Just make sure that, yeah, everything's working well um, and all the vents are completely fine. I'm pretty happy with everything. I've seen that obviously they had had like TVs and stuff on the wall, which is a little bit of patchwork. What would normally happen is when the new tenant were to come in is they'd probably want to do similar stuff, put a TV up on the wall or do that. So they're not too fussed of any little things that you can see. But if you look at the place for somewhere that's been two years as we kind of back out of here, two and a half years somebody's lived here and they've actually done a pretty good job. So I'm very happy with it. Um, I think that it's turned out pretty well. So look, I hope that's an enjoyable little segment to understand of some of the stuff that I do. As I mentioned, this isn't something that I do on a regular basis. I don't go and check the properties myself and walk through them. Uh, it's, I don't really have the time for it. Um, and there's kind of too many to go and do at the same time. So I leave the managing agents, staff and everything to kind of take care of that for me. But I thought it was just something interesting for you guys to see and hopefully it was useful. Otherwise now, what have I got to do? I've got to go and drop the keys to the estate agent. So as you can see, those keys are here that have been left. That's the entrance key to the apartment and to the main building. Got to go and drop those off to the estate agent um, who's got the people, I think, like I said, moving in on Wednesday. So we'll hand those over, deal with everything. Shouldn't be any issues. I know there's a little bit of a clean that will happen before those guys move in. But yeah, if there are any questions that you have about this, then let me know. And um, we've got some cool things coming up in some videos as well about talking to the estate agents and the state of the market as well. So more for that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, make sure you're liking the videos and subscribing because there's a lot more to come. But that's a little bit of an insight into taking it from rental, so on the market, tenant moving in, and then tenant moving out, and new tenants moving in. So the in to in, I like to call it. 
so finished up at the property. Um, there's actually a few little bits that I had to check kind of on the way as well, um, just driving through some of the other properties. But like I said, hopefully that was useful. Headed back now to the office, got a very important meeting, which is to do with Circle, um, the new website, which you guys will actually see quite soon um, as I kind of post it out. But yeah, new website will be very, very interesting. Working on that and hopefully should be out in a few days as well. So headed back to the office, back to Windsor, round about 35, 40 minute drive and then to do some work. See you in a bit. Back at the office here, just finished a meeting with uh, a guy called Michael, who is actually a member of Circle, but sorting out the website related stuff that we needed to do for Circle. It looks fantastic. It looks like we're gonna be live by the end of the week, if not Monday, so that should be super exciting. There's gonna be a public facing side of it as well for those on YouTube to see, so keep an eye in the description below for that, maybe announced in the next video. But otherwise, I think by the time this goes live, you should be able to see it, so look out for that. Wrapping things up now for the day, I've got a few other things to do. It's been a busy one, it was a very early start, but uh, there's some exciting stuff happening in the rest of the week, so see you in the next part. Okay, welcome to, it's a little bit cold, uh, Woburn Golf Club. Now, for those who don't know about Woburn, uh, what a club. I mean, I hardly knew too much about it until I ended up here. Um, and we are here as a special invitation from another car manufacturer, because apparently that's what I do now. I just play golf days with car manufacturers. So if there's any car manufacturers out there, Ferrari, <laughs> any other ones that want to work to do some sort of golf days, let me know. Let's go and do that. So here with, of course, the Tesla, at, interestingly, a Lamborghini event. So first of all, massive thank you to Lamborghini, HR and Lamborghini who have invited me along to a golf day here at Woburn. Um, we're going to show you because they've got some pretty cool cars that have arrived. Of course, Lamborghini have turned up in a little bit of style and something extremely special, which I will be driving in a few weeks. So make sure if you're not subscribed to subscribe right now and like the video because that is going to be coming soon. So should we take a look around some of the cars and I'll talk to you a little bit more about why we are here today. Let's start walking around. I'm going to close this door and head around this way. So let's back up slightly. Um, first things first, what do we got here? So we've got the Urus. Tavir is absolutely freezing behind the camera. <laughs> He's wearing a short sleeve. We've got the Urus here. So this is HRN Lamborghini's demo Urus. Um, we'll get the keys and we'll look around it in a second. But what do we think? Do we like the Urus? This one is a huge, huge spec with carbon fiber everywhere. Back, front, uh, wing mirrors, everything. Um, insane. And I believe this is actually sold. And next to it here, let's have a look. We have got the Hurricane STO. What do people think? Do we like this car? I think this is pretty beautiful not too bad at all looks really really nice I think it's pretty insane and thank you to Corel Corel thanks very much thank has given me the keys to the car so as you can see here let's take a look at this uh, let's have a look around we'll look around the interior I want to know in the comments what do you think about the STO is it a nice car do we like the color do we like the styling let's walk around because to me the most special part of this car is actually closer to the back of it so check out this roof scoop. we're gonna have a look at it from the back properly because this is the best place to see it first of all let's start off with this rear end um insane look at this spoiler i mean it's basically a race car on the road it is a race car on the road this is taken from the track which i believe is like the super trofeo style which they've taken um the design off and they've just basically made it road road legal so it's a nice comparison to here a performante and this is a performante spider here on the right hand side where they made this like the track version but this is the actual track track version which you can't really daily it's cool because they've also got this roof scoop here as you can see here at the top which is insane looks amazing and just a bit like the svj you actually have to unscrew this part of this section in order to lift off this section here so let's do this uh, i'm gonna jump in here you're gonna go look at the other side let's get inside here and have a look at this car i'm not gonna start it up we're at a golf course i'm not gonna make a bunch of noise so i'm just gonna put it on just to see what we're looking at here probably gonna have to lower the sound really quickly if it comes on no, not at the moment, everything's nice and low. So we've got the new screen here, which is what we saw actually in the um, Hurricane Evo? Evo? I think it's Evo, yeah, Hurricane Evo. And we've got similar seats as well, but this feels super raw. Like, I haven't sat in a Lamborghini for a while, um, but wow, isn't that amazing? The, the car's on at the exact same time uh, on my phone. Really nice interior on this one. You've got this kind of white contrast. Everything is Alcantara everything is Alcantara. I mean, literally, there is nothing that I can't see that's not an Alcantara. Small little bits, I should say, that are in leather. Steering wheel as well. This has got like the black pack, which I know is a styling pack. 
and they've made this a lot more aggressive here as well. Not much change in the STO in terms of what we can see here, um, but this is the biggest change. I would personally say that I would like to have seen maybe carbon fiber around this section, um, but again, it's a nice contrast. But what a place to be. And this is a special car because you can't see it just yet, but we'll show you a little bit more of the interior. There's actually got the option where you can record if you are going out on track as well. So it's got like the track telemetry. Um, so that's really cool. And we've got these kind of like pull handles here for the doors and everything here is just all about saving weight. The whole door is carbon fiber exposed. I kind of like it. Again, let me know in the comments what you guys think about it, but this looks insane. You cannot see anything out of the back at all. I mean, nothing at all. Uh, so the visibility is gonna be terrible, but really nice place to be. Just, I'm not even driving it, but it feels a little bit more rugged. I think it's just because of the looks, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, because this is pretty cool. And of course, I will be driving this at some stage. So don't worry, you'll be seeing that coming on the channel very soon. Warm up session, we're here at the driving range keeping it a little bit quiet as people are practicing. Uh, yeah, a little bit nervous, I don't know why. It's a championship course, so it's pretty special, even compared to Fox and last time. So leave me alone and let me practice, please, because otherwise I'm going to screw up. <laughs> Bargaining three people. We have a, at Woven, uh, the bargain is a wide setting seat. Uh, so we're left, going left, left through here. 12 is between 10 and 16 last time. Are you sure that way? Yeah. I, it's the wrong way. Are you joking? Okay, so here we are, we're starting off. Now this is a shotgun start. We are playing a staple for the competition, which I'll explain a little bit later on as we go around the course. But we're starting on the 12th because there's so many of us, we're all kind of spread out starting on different holes. So there's gonna be what's called a shotgun start. We're gonna hear an air horn and then everybody goes. We've got two teams here. So two teams here are four, one teeing off after the other. Look at this beauty here. So we've got a really, really nice hole here with two water hazards, a bit of a tricky one to start off with. Um, but looking forward to it. I'm gonna pull a three wood and try and get it over that water. But honestly, now the four people that we're playing with today, we're gonna to introduce them as we go along. For those who wanna be on camera, for those who don't, some will be familiar faces that you'll see. So fingers crossed, this one is nearest to the pin competition in two shots. So whoever in two shots can get closer, closest to that flag, we stick a pin in the ground. For those who haven't seen the previous golf video, me and BMW Park Lane, go and click up there and watch that because that will give you a little bit of indication of what I'm doing here today. Except today, we're here with Lamborghini. We've got a bunch of buggies, which are not Lamborghinis, but there is a cool car parked up on one of the holes. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit. Time to tee this off. We've got seven minutes of the air horn, and then we're ready to go. Second, third, fourth. Let's go. Shoot. Give you anything, we're starting off and it is very difficult so far. Let's have a money shot. seventh now this is the seventh hole on the course here this is the signature for woven it is a special par five i know i've got a putter since so i've just come off the green there um, with a nice uh, little bogey on the par three here we are beautiful we've got a fairway to the right fairway to the left here now the easy shot is down the left hand side play your way all the way around but if you want to be brave and you want to go to the right here and try and make it into the green on two you've got about four or five tiered bunkers i think it is 
three tiered bunkers, one after the other that you're going to be chipping into and into and into. So this is going to be interesting. Um, given the way that I normally drive, it's going to go a bit to the right, but this is the signature hole of the Woburn Golf Course on the Marquis. So yeah, this is going to be exciting. I'm going to put this away and pull the driver out. This is absolutely beautiful. So we are currently at the halfway house, which is technically, for us, not really the halfway house. We've only got two holes left to go. So in each of food rating, I'm doing the sausage rolls. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to pretend like this is the first one that I've eaten based on the review, but this is actually the second. Beautiful. <laughs> it's got like an apple juice or something in it. I don't know what it's about, but it's fantastic. And I absolutely love it. And just a little tipple here, which is called a whiskey mac or mac. Whiskey mac. Yeah. Yeah, which is a whiskey mixed with a bit of ginger wine. Ginger wine. Ooh. But don't worry, I'm not driving. Um, and we've got a lot of the rest of the day to go. So, Corel, how's it going? Oh, really? I should have not turned up. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, the, food, the, the sausage roll is really good, so it makes up for the whole round. But yeah, um, I'm going to give this a rating of. I'm going to go five. I'm going to go five. This is fantastic. Oh, lovely. Nah. Wrapping it up there, what a, what a game. Had actually a really good round, especially on that back nine. Um, yeah, uh, had, a good, had a good round, we all had a good time. Gonna go and kind of get covered before it starts literally just pissing it down with the rain. So we're gonna do that, let these guys finish off behind us, catch you in the clubhouse. So we are now done, showered, changed, everything. Um, looking a little bit smarter, I've got my blazer behind me. It's a very nice club, so obviously what they do is you have to have a certain type of dress code. So we're just sitting outside here, enjoying a little bit of the sun, even though it seemed like it was gonna rain, but it was only for a short period of time. And it's now dinner time and a charity auction. So I mentioned before, this is for a brain tumor foundation. Um, this was a charity day, thankfully, that uh, Lamborghini invited me to. Hopefully gonna be able to participate in the auction and contribute some money towards charity. But it's been a nice break, even though I haven't really been switched off from work today has been um, the first Friday of the month which means that that's non-farm payrolls and for that reason that is the unemployment data that we see in the US so for that reason I still had to monitor the markets around about 1 30 uh, I was in a nice trade and that worked out pretty well so um, pretty happy with that it was a great round of golf I want to say a massive thank you to HRO and Lamborghini if you're not following them on Instagram go and follow them over here on the right hand side um, and again if you want to follow me on Instagram make sure you do because you get to see behind the scenes of all of this stuff sometimes before it appears on YouTube but if you haven't liked the video just yet make sure you've liked it and subscribe because as I mentioned we might even just should we to be should we take the car for a bit of a spin now the weather's good it depends uh, if it's coming out let's see let's see if we take the car for a bit of a spin so um we might do that um, otherwise charity dinner to focus on now uh, see what we can do there and then wrap up a little bit for the weekend but hope you enjoy the video so far let's get some nice food and some food ratings and uh yeah enjoy the rest of the evening So, 
wrapping things up here now at Woburn. A little bit of an echo here, but it's been an amazing evening. Had a really, really good time, um, all for a great cause as well. So that was pretty fantastic. It was the John King um, Brain Tumor Foundation. We heard a heartwarming story from daughter as well about how things happen, unfortunately, with his illness. So I think a lot of money has been raised, probably in excess of like 50,000 plus uh, a bit more. So that was really good. And just really thankful again to HR and Lamborghini for inviting me and having a good time. But it's getting late now. I'm gonna go and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Remember to like, subscribe to all the other bits. See you again soon.